The micro SD or trans flash slot is a standard spring loaded device. One thing I need to point out is that this slot is slightly out of alignment with the case so if you're not careful you could actually push the card down inside the case and miss the slot entirely. When the card's in place it's nice and flush and it's unlikely to fall out. Okay so how does it operate? Now the first thing that I should point out is that it's not very intuitive but we'll give it a go anyway. Hold down the bottom button until the orange light comes on. Right now it's in standby mode. It'll stay like this for 30 seconds and then switch itself off. So we'll touch the top button and hold it down until the light flashes. Now it's recording video. And to stop you just tap it again and it goes back to standby mode. And in this mode you can take a picture just by tapping. It'll take a really terrible picture with one flash of the orange light. Hold it down again, flashing, we're back to video again. Tap, back to standby and bottom button hold down and it's off. Well, in my hand here, it doesn't look anything other than a car remote key fob, so I don't think anyone should be able to spot it, but let's try it out. advantage means that you could attach it to things like a model aeroplane or a helicopter but unfortunately I don't own either of those so I'm going to have to attach it to my motorcycle helmet instead. Okay so that's me nearly ready to go but just one more thing I did buy two of these so I've attached the second one to the back of the bike facing backwards just to give a different perspective on things so let's see how it goes. If you've got a sharp eye, you might notice that there's a difference in the weather conditions between the front and the rear cameras. That's because I had to go back and reshoot the helmet cam because I positioned it too far forward on the helmet and all it was recording was the tarmac in front of the bike. And that scenario probably highlights the main disadvantage of these kind of cameras. You can never be too sure that you're pointing them in the right direction until you get home and review the footage, and then it's probably too late. So I had a couple of concerns about the keyring cam. The first was that it seemed to record a very narrow field of vision, so when I got home I decided I'd test this against the MD-80. And secondly, it seemed to use an awful lot more storage to record the same amount of footage. 